Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody out there is doing well and having a fantastic day wherever you're at. So the following video is going to be me showing you how to take the Docker container for the YSF reflector I've been working on and pull it down from Docker Hub and customize it to your own needs for now. Um, I have realized in post-production editing that I had a, mi a microphone mix up in some of my scenes. So you, uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize that some of the audio is going to be soft off in the um, in the video, especially when I move over to a couple of screen grab scenes. Uh, it's not much, uh, and I can still hear pretty well, so I'm not going to try and re-record it. Um, I apologize if anybody has a, has a hard time hearing, but um, I don't think you're really losing anything in it, um, even if you can't hear it. Hear it. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to adjust the gain on production editing and, uh, and let that be what it's going to be. So without further ado, let me um, let me show you how to deploy this container I've been working on. All right, so here is my public YSF reflector container on Docker Hub. Um, just pushed it up here. Uh, only one tag right now, and that's latest. Um, it is public. It's available for download or pull, however you want to do it. So. Uh, path name here, and I'll link this in the description below, uh, of course. But uh, it's uh, Adam Frederick 04 slash pi star, or I'm sorry, excuse me, slash PYSF reflector. And then the tag is latest. Uh, if you want to use it um, here in just a minute, we will uh, we will look at getting it running on a VM I have running. Uh, that we did that's obviously not the development environment and uh, we'll do a pull from that public repo and uh, I'll walk you through through you guys through what it would take to uh, get it up and going as your own uh, if you have your own reflector ID and description and all that um, I'm gonna change it from what is um, built in the way I have it right now and show you how to use some quick docker copy commands uh, pull down the two files that need to be edited, change them, push them up and uh, restart the docker uh, container which should then you know restart your services to um, what you changed everything to so uh, without too much further ado we'll, we'll jump right into that alright just to show you that I don't have any existing remnants of anything uh, you can see Docker PS shows nothing. If I do a Docker image LS, um, that one is six months old, which is well behind when I started this. I don't even, I think that was my first attempt, and it did absolutely nothing that I wanted it to. So, um, anyway, there it is. Um, I don't plan on using it, but uh, what I am going to do is. Um, going to jump out and we're going to start uh, getting a reflector launch with some different settings other than what's in mine. Um, so real quick I'm going to take the lazy way out and I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to copy that pull command because again I'm lazy and I'm quite comfortable saying that in this regard. Um, so again it's docker pool Adam Frederick 04 slash PYSF reflector colon latest. So I'm going to pull that image down and since it's public it's just going to pull it down. It's going to take a minute. Mm, it's pulled it, downloaded, or it's downloaded them all now. It's extracting all the files and this take just a second. If it takes too long I'll copy through. Oh, nope, that went pretty quick. So now if we do a docker image ls, not le, ls, you can see that we in fact have that image from six seconds ago so now we should be able to do a docker run attack d attack it and then of course we got a pass ports in so port attack t 42 no 42010 colon i'm still passing the same port just 
out of habit, I guess, at this point. You know, when you register your reflector, you, you register that, uh, those ports to different things. So, you know what, let me, um, let's do 4209. The one that I'm going to, the, the settings I'm going to put in this are just, I'm just going to make up on the fly and, and show you that it works. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. Um, and then from that, and then I'm going to, oh, uh, let's see, let's give it a, let's declare the name. Oh, I think I need to do that here. Tech Tech name is Radio Runner. Uh, so if I remember how to do this, that should work. And that is building. There we go. Docker PS. All right. So that is up and running. And if we do a Docker exec, IT into Radio Runner. Oh, see, again, forgot the bin bash. Uh, I don't know why I can't remember that step, but it fails every time. Tail tack F var logs mm. Oops, not log mmd. All right, so there we go. Um, add port. Yep, so you can see we added 4210, and we're going to change that. So I'm going to copy our control C out of that tail and then I'm gonna exit the um, exit the container um, and come back to the standard SSH for this host and I'm going to um, pull it down with a docker copy docker copy radio hmm docker copy i don't let me hit the help file real quick uh docker cp that's why docker cp radio runner app P Y S F reflector three. Uh, see, this is where I need another one of those uh, file structure maps. I might need to remake those. One of those um, P Y S F reflector dot I and I. Let's see if memory serves correctly, and then I'm just going to copy this down to home on this one. Um, home uh, PYSF reflector.ini. Yeah, so there's no container path. Hmm. So there's. Uh, so just because I don't remember, and I'm going to try and document this in either Docker Hub or uh, I'm going to post a uh, GitLab repo as well um, with some of these notes, but uh, let's see. Uh, I could Docker exec back in. Oh. Uh, doc oh, not in my local terminal. Docker exec tech t radio runner bin bash mm ls ls app pysf reflector 3 pysf reflector 3 all right yep okay so control d try that key so while that's still pulled up and i can see it it is ysfr reflector 3 And then I'm looking for PYSF reflector I and I. Yep, so let's see, that should go. What? App. But it does. So root app slash PYSFR. 
Y S F R E F. Ah, I didn't spell reflector correctly. Re Reflect, reflector. All right, and then while we're there, let's just go ahead and do the same thing with the deny.db. And now if I do ls, I see I have those two files. And actually, because I do have a reflector running on this one, um, I am gonna do. I'm gonna move these out of the root. So, um, so that nothing gets messed up. And then I'm gonna move deny.db um, to test reflector deny.db. I'm gonna move py. Test reflector P Y S F R E F L. So pause. those are gone. C D into test reflector, and then I'm doing Vim uh, P P Y S F reflector I and I. All right, so all right, so here we'll do an edit. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to change this to 6770. I'm making this up. This probably isn't even test 22. It's testing room only. Um, what do we say? We're going to change this to 4209. Yep, 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 yep. And then we're going to do a write and quit with those minor edits. And then what you will probably want to do for yours is my default deny DB. I'm deny DB. Why is my... Huh? Why is that file... Well, that's not good. Um, let's do Docker CP Radio Runner App P Y S F Radio Reflector Three Deny dot DB Two deny.db ls mm, vim deny.db there we go alright so I don't know what happened there I must have fat fingered one of the move or copy commands my deny.db that I created when I was doing that testing is actually a whitelist uh, of call signs that I wanted to be in my testing group um, and I didn't want this room open to everybody while I was I was testing uh, and generating a whole bunch of logs and stuff that I didn't want to have to parse through. So um, you can see that I have um, this AL colon and some call signs here. This is my allow list. Um, if you want to block call signs um, I honestly don't remember the nomenclature I want to say it's CS colon and then a call sign for a block and you can do like gateways and that kind of stuff refer back to the documentation from um, the uh, IU5 JAE PYSF reflector 3 in his GitLab or GitHub um, and he has it pretty well laid out on how all of that works. Um, I will 
his stuff is linked in the description of this video and all the other ones. So if you go back and look, you can see that out. But uh, what you would probably want to do is just um, comment these out, which is what I'm going to do for this one. I'm just going to run through and comment them out for ease of explanation and then copy them back up. Docker copy CP deny.db to radio runner app p y s f r e f l e c t o r 3 deny.db and then we're going to do docker copy uh, p y s f r and i up to that app p y s f r I think the hardest thing is not having autocomplete on the Docker file paths, but you know, that's all right. I S F R E F L, especially mostly just because I'm a horrible speller. All right, so now I can Docker. I'm a Docker exec back in. Not that it. Oh, see, I used exit instead of exit. Radio runner bin bash. Um, let's see, tail tack f. Let's see if it um, changed on its own for log. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Six allowed. So it reloaded the blacklist. Uh, there's six allowed. All right, so it loaded. It did update that change because it shows there's only the one allowed. The AL was still in the, uh, excuse me, in the title in the header that I didn't pull that out, but that's okay. Um, so what you could do, I do believe, and we'll try it is um, we will Control D. Do a Docker restart of Radio Runner. And then when it comes back here in just a second, it should return back to me. There we go. Um, we'll jump back in and we'll do a tail tack F var log mm ysf. Yep, so. You see you added port 4, so the port changed, and the block list, allow list combo has changed. So now what you could do is um, from your local machine, you could do a doc, uh, get back to your local machine, uh, and out of that reflector or out of that container rather, and you could do a docker commit radio runner, and I'm just going to, I'm going to upload this as a new test tag, but just you would use your own docker hub repo with your own tagging systems to do it. So, um, nothing special. PYSF reflector test and then you can do a docker push and you push it up to your you know of course replace all this with your personal repo um, stuff and it's going up we will um, let me um, switch over and look at this so now if we refresh this Overview. Uh, unless I really jack this up. There we go. And then there's the test. So the test one won't stay out there long. It'll get deleted. But that's just a quick way you can take what I do have available and uh, through a quick couple commands, edit it to make it yours. I know it's not a perfect system. Um, I'm really going to start looking into. 
um, the, where you can add the environmental variables to make this a uh, little bit easier when you do like a when you just do your initial docker run or add it into a docker build uh, file but um, that is going to be a little bit later down the road all right i hope you've been enjoyed um, watching this video and i hope that it's given you some help and advice in how to handle this um, and i hope that you go out there and pull my image and use it um, don't be afraid to open issues and comment if you need help uh, this will be the last video that i put out for a while uh, looking like three to four weeks i've got some work stuff that i've got to attend to and it's just going to take up a majority of my time and i don't know that i'm really going to have time to to get a video out for the next little bit but when i once this project is complete um somewhere I'm, I'm looking near the beginning of july i will be be back and we will pick up and start working on the docker compose side of this um i want to get docker compose going and also get the environmental variables for passing in um so that it's a little easier to make it your own from the uh, docker hub image um so like I said, if, if you find yourself needing help, stuck, uh, comment here, uh, follow the links to the GitHub, uh, open an issue. Um, I can't promise that I will be the most responsive, but I, I think there'll be others out there that can help you. Um, and for a lot of it, you could probably go back and open up, uh, or go back and look at the IU5JAE GitHub, uh, GitLab, or GitHub, I think his is on GitHub and uh you'll find a lot of helpful documentation there don't um if you find yourself there um uh, look at the issues i found a lot of help for um working on that uh project in the issues of the iu5jea uh repository um that where people have had issues and that stuff there's a lot of there's a lot of good content back there so uh that's one thing this project has definitely taught me don't be afraid to go look at the issues when you're using a a git project um you know there, there's there's a lot of good conversation had back there and while the issue may not be opened up with the exact problem symptom you're having or thing you're trying to do you may very well find what you need back there um but with that said, I think this is, uh, this is going to be it for me for a while. So uh, I thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thank you and God bless.